that you uh -huh. have to pay in order to join a class. Uh -huh. uh, it's going to be interesting because I don't know who's paid, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, in, in order to, to get into the class, if you don't pay, you can't uh, access to the you class. Can you watch? Uh, uh, you just watch it, yeah. This, yeah. this is different, right? I, I, I think they're trying to reiterate, this is a different system. Okay? Uh -huh. They're keeping the regular classes. What's mm -hmm. happening is they're, the, with these courses, it's a different idea so that you have reserved yeah. classes that include tutorial videos that have all the materials accessible, that have um, the ability for you to ask questions with each other and have a community talking about the topics mm -hmm. so that you, um, you, you study one thing and by the end of it, you understand it completely. But this price is, uh, they have to, to pay each month this uh, quantity? It's. I think it's twenty dollars for two weeks. Ah, every two weeks. Yeah, I believe. Ah, uh, okay. I will tell her because I think I, I honestly I don't know how to how it works. So. Yeah. Well, honestly, Liliana, I don't really know. <laughs> how it works. Oh. <laughs> and I, she's yeah. uh, afraid of me. Yeah, I know. I don't know how to do that. And I know uh, you have to wait. And uh, maybe because she doesn't have a a card. So um, I don't know how to to, to make the payment. Uh, yeah, I think it has to be done on something called PayPal. I believe. Ah, PayPal. Ah, yeah. okay. PayPal. Okay, I will tell her about it. For that, <laughs> you don't need a credit card. For no, you don't need a credit card. No, you just That's you a good set up your account. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot, Daniel. I will tell her today. Cool. Cool. Uh, Theresa, how was your uh, weekend? Hi. Good. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Yeah. Thank. You. Oh, How I guess it's your... well. It, it it was good. It was good. Yeah. My weekend was Friday, Saturday, or Saturday, Sunday, not Friday. Yeah. Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I went on a little vacation, but I uh, um... I got off work and then went straight to the bus station and then <sighs> came back late last night on the bus. So I've kind oh. of been gone all week. And, hey, I don't know who was in the class on Friday, but my connection was really bad. Ah, oh, yes. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right at the end. You just have to remember. <laughs> yeah, so I, I wanted to apologize for that. Because... Someone even wrote that, uh, what if you are in lobby? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, suddenly, suddenly all the power in the neighborhood went out. Oh, okay. I didn't have power for about an hour, and then, and then for my next class for for the beginner students, I had one minute to prepare mm -hmm. because there was no electricity, so I couldn't get the materials. <laughs> there you go. Hey, Lorenzo. How are you, Daniel? Hey, man. Hey, I wanted to say um, congratulations. The, oh. the Dominican Republic won the World Baseball Classic. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, we are every, the champion the, now. The, the best baseball team in the world right now is from the Dominican Republic. So there you go. Tell it, world tell it to the American. Tell it to the American. <laughs> okay? Well, to the Major League yeah. Baseball. Tell, it, tell them. It's it's always so nice that the Americans always do so poorly in, in the sport that they think they're the best at, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we um, everybody knows the Dominican Republic because of the baseball players. Um, there's many good players individually, but now as a team, uh, this is the first time we. We won a, a title, a world title, you know? Yeah, it's very and, cool. Uh, yeah, the uh, people were crazy last week. <laughs> I'm sure. On the street and, and waiting for the, the, the trophy, the trophy. The trophy, um, yeah. Yeah, in the, in the airport. Everybody was wa uh, were waiting for the trophy. Yeah. And it was wonderful, incredible. Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of pride in in the Dominican right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, um. Uh, Dominican players uh, were showing the 
uh, a type of food that we eat uh, uh, almost every day, a plantain, no? Plantain, yeah, yeah. Plantain, right. <laughs> and the, and the, in the, the fan, we're showing the, the plantain everywhere because they, they, they say that the, the power came from plantain. You know? <laughs> the plantain power, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I've never heard yeah. that before. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Incredible. Cool. <laughs> hey, Lorenzo, how was your weekend? Uh, very, very busy. Oh, okay. <laughs> because my sister-in-law came from the United States uh, for three for the weekend. Oh, nice. Um, Just uh, only for one weekend. I, yes, from Thursday to Saturday night. Oh wow, that's um, a short short trip. Yes, yes. Uh, she came here to to buy something. Um, um, I had to to show her the the city how 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 different it is from the last time she came here. Yeah, I'm sure things have changed. Yeah, yeah. She was surprised because. <laughs> Many things have uh, many things is looks different. Yeah, I bet. Mm -hmm. I bet. Yeah, yeah. But it, it it was a good uh, weekend. Um, uh, yeah. we, um, the first time the uh, yesterday, we taste the the sweet beans. The sweet beans is eaten here every uh, holy weeks, every year, every holy weeks we ate. Uh, we 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 eat uh, holy beans. Holy beans is a, it a sweet beans. Very, oh, really? Very good. Yeah. Ah, sweet beans. Cool. Yeah. Hey, it's a uh, it's the start of Semana Santa, right? Holy week. Yes. Ah. Semana Santa, Holy Weeks. Yeah. Everybody is on vacation from today, um, from Wednesday. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Party day. Nice. Okay. Uh, hey, Ludovic. Hello. How are hey, you? how are you doing? I'm fine. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I could not attend the class uh, last week. I was very busy. So. That's okay. I'm glad you made it today. That's really nice. That's really nice. So we're we're gonna talk a little bit about food today, so you can tell us all about uh, all about your food. <laughs> I like it. I like food. Cool. Cool. <laughs> And hey, Peter. Hello, Daniel. Hey, how are hey. you? Good, good. How how's uh, how are things hanging? How was the weekend? Oh, it was a total hangout, especially on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> I almost have a hangover today. <laughs> I went from one hangout to the other one. Oh, it was really? Quite interesting, and uh, very s serious topics everywhere. Like, like what? They, they were talking about weapons, uh, weapon controls uh, in America. Uh, about uh, can't really remember. With so so many different uh, topics. Well, I, that's a heavy one. That's a heavy one. Who who is the teacher? Uh, actually, I took over the, uh, 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 the Colingo class because <laughs> uh, uh, George, George Macklin was talking about that on Saturday. Uh, and he went out and never came back. Half. Oh really? So you took over. I took over, yeah. <laughs> hey, Peter, he's from uh, England or no, he's I'm from America, from Indiana. Ah, yeah. ah. interesting, interesting. Well, I know people. Perhaps get... it became too hot for him. I don't know. <laughs> Possibly. Well, I know. I know. That I, I'm always surprised at because it seems to me so obvious that they need gun controls in the United States, and it's always amazing that Americans. There's so many Americans. And we have the same topic on Sunday once again. Like we, also, we want, we want we want control of our guns. We should have the right to have guns. It's so surprising, so surprising. Because I think as outsiders, people from other countries, we think it's obvious that people being allowed to carry guns is such a bad idea. But well, the usually United the excuse is uh, uh, if we don't have guns, uh, there will still be robberies and and all that. Uh, because yeah. most of uh, those attacks are uh, done with uh, illegal uh, weapons, but I don't yeah. think it's uh, it's really a reason to have guns. I, I mean, 
<laughs> no. No. I just can't imagine shooting somebody. That's that's the crazy thing. Like if somebody said to me, you know, you need a gun for protection. And I say, yeah, but what do I do with it, right? I, <laughs> I wouldn't even know how to use it. it it's just a, a weird idea. Well, right. even if I'm usually sane, uh, I might get drunk one day, get very angry, uh, 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 was so angry about my neighbor because he did something, and all of a sudden I decide, uh, because I'm so drunk, I, I shoot him. Yeah, right, yeah. You know? So you don't even have to be depressive or what else in yeah. order to, to, to start a mass killing. No? Yeah, no, I agree. It's, it, but it, it always surprises me huh, that uh, there are, are many Americans who, are, who are say, we need guns. I say, the rest of the world doesn't need guns. Why do Americans need guns? And actually, George said in, 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 in some states in America, it's a law that if you carry a, a, a gun in public, you have to carry it open. I think that is really dangerous. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if you walk along, along and all of a sudden so, someone grabs your weapon because you have to yeah. carry it openly. Yeah. <laughs> scary thought. Yeah, scary yeah. thought for sure. Wow. Uh, I wish I was in that class. Yeah, it was really interesting. <laughs> I'm sure I might have different it. opinions, yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, Victor. Hello. Hello, hey. Daniel. Victor, did you say you, you talked to Ben about the, the new uh, courses? Yeah. And any, what do you think about them? Do they sound interesting to you? Uh, it sounds interesting if I have money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm not really sure how it's going to work, honestly, at all. So there you go. I think even if you don't have money, there they're interesting to come join and check out because of the other aspects of it. I think, I think. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, and I think you should learn more about it because you are your teacher. I know, yeah, I know. Well, it's very quick. Everything's happening quickly. <laughs> there you go. Uh, are you yes. going to teach any course? Or just... Yeah, well, uh, to start with, I'm teaching just the beginner um, Spanish or English for Spanish speakers. To start with, okay. and we'll see how yeah. it goes because it's a, it's a test right now. So we'll see how things how things go. Uh, it's a review today for uh, Spanish speakers. A review? It's all review, Liliana. It's starting from the very basic again for Spanish. Uh, ah, it's like a review for them again. Yeah. Well, it's going to be yeah, at least at least three weeks of review for them, because uh, okay. they've really moved quite far up, right? Like uh, Maria's level has really improved. Yeah, because uh, she doesn't speak any word in English. You spoke no English. No. no. Yeah, I know it's quite good. Mm -hmm. Very happy with your classes. Cool. Cool. Hey, Victor, we're hearing some background noise. I don't know what's up. I'm not sure what's uh, up. Really? Yeah, I don't know what's up. It just sounds I like think uh, it's because of the fan. Ah, okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's very hot. I hate it. <laughs> okay. No problem. Uh, hey, Jinju. Hello, teacher. Hey, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Excellent. Did you have a good weekend? Oh, I have a good weekend. Sir, you know, you are the very popular, you are the very, you are the very popular teacher in the Klingo. <laughs> it's very hard. It's very hard for me to join your class. No, you do good, Jinju. I see you regularly. You do a good job of getting it. <laughs> oh, I waited and waited. Okay. When exactly. time is coming, I will join this. Cool, cool. Hey, Jinju, do you go to Colingo on the weekend? Oh, I often go to Colingo. <laughs> I think. Klingon is a good place for me 
to improve my English. Yeah, for sure. And, and it sounds really good, Jinju. You have improved your English. So that's excellent. When, sure. I, when I first came to Klingo, I I a lot to speak English. Now I can speak English confidently. Thank yeah. You. Yeah, I think you this give is me a lot of help. You are a cool. good teacher. Well, I, this is a big thing, Shinju. Is a lot of the time, I think a lot of you have the ability to speak English. The problem is getting the opportunity to speak English. So. Yes, yes. Mm. Cool. Well, Study hey, English is like uh, do some physical exercises. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You, you should uh, repeat and repeat. Say <laughs> again and again. <laughs> Got it. I understand. And hey, I like I like the idea of practicing English today, talking about friends. Two two worlds. Oh, oh I like this topic. <laughs> you always give us some interesting topic. You oh, are there, you go. there you go. So you are very popular in Klingo. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Jinju. Uh, Babiana. Hi, teacher. Good morning. Hey, how's it going? Good. Everything is good. And I'm a little uh, uh, tired because yesterday uh, my husband and I went for a hiking, and it was very intense. And today all my body hurts, and I can <laughs> barely walk <laughs> properly. I am walking like a robot. <laughs> <laughs> Fabiana, you're you're such an athlete. I think last week you were talking about going for a big bike ride, and then you go on a big hike. Sure, can be. That's a good one. Cool. We, we like we like to go for uh, hikings and uh, ride bikes uh, in the neighborhood, or even in the in the mountains and do mountain bike and. That's yeah. it. Excellent. I, I'm sure there's lots of beautiful hiking in the mountains of Brazil, yes. too. Yes, there yeah. are. Very cool. Very cool. Awesome. Well, welcome to class. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Good to and, see you guys. Yeah, good to see you, too. And listen, guys, I think we're ready. Uh, let's get talking about France. We have our expert in the class in, in Ludovic, so any questions, you, you direct them to Ludovic because uh, <laughs> he'll, he knows better than me, for sure. So very quickly, let's just do a quick review of what we've already talked about. Okay. So here we go. We have the France, the, the, the French flag, the flag of France. Okay. And we talked about the three colors. Liliana, what do the three colors mean? Uh, blue means uh, bourgeois, uh, white, clergy, and red, uh, nobility. There you go. There you go. So, kind of bourgeois is the rich people within society, right? High, high society. Clergy means people high up in the church. And nobility, red, means uh, kings and queens, right? So, it has a, a lot of old history, the flag of England. Uh, old symbolism. Right? And a lot of things in France are old. So, there you go. We talked about the geography. Sir, about I have the a more question. Yes, Shinju. What do the white stand for? The white, the white stands for, sort of stands for religion, but it stands for specifically the clergy. Okay, so it's religion, but the clergy, and clergy means um, the people in power within the church. Okay. Uh, hello. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. So, guys, we're talking about the um, geography of France. Can anybody tell me anything specific about the geography of France? Um, they have the, um, the highest um, point or the highest mountain, um, Mont Blanc. Sure. What? And it, it, it shares its border, right, with, yeah. with Switzerland and Italy. Uh -huh. So yeah, you have you have Mont Blanc um, on the borders, Spain and Belgium and Luxembourg and um, 
um, German, German, see, German. Yeah, German. yeah, a big border with Germany, actually. Mm. What, one important thing is France is actually the biggest country by size in the oh. European Union. Mm. So I think a lot of people don't realize that. A lot of people think that Germany is, but, uh, but no, France is actually the biggest in terms of size. Right? Mm -hmm. And we also talked about all the, the overseas territories of uh, France, yes. right? France still has a lot of overseas, overseas islands, right? Lots, lots of possessions overseas. So very quickly, I'll just show you guys a, a little map of French possessions. Can everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I think a lot, a lot of these places now have become uh, tourist destinations for French people, right? Mm -hmm. I know, I know a lot of, a lot of my French friends have been to lots of these places because it's, it's the connection to France is easy. You know, you can go there, speak French, no problem, uh, and it's kind of a beautiful vacation islands. Right? So there you go. Uh, Hey, Ludovic, have you ever been to any of the, the French territories? Yeah, I ever been to Martinique. Ah, cool. And uh, cool. that's all. <laughs> but okay. it's a nice destination. Be Is it quite beautiful? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Cool. Very cool. Uh, hey, there's one other island here that isn't being shown. Can anybody tell me? There's a big island that's. The, the biggest island that France has possession of. What, what's missing here? Corsica? Yeah, Corsica. Cor uh, Corsica. Mm -hmm. Corsica. So, or in, in French you say Corse, right? Yeah. Right here. See right in the Mediterranean, right uh -huh. there? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's Corsica. In English you say Corsica. In French you say Corse. Mm -hmm. So there you go, uh, and and a big island, and and administered a lot closer from France because it is quite close to France, but um, also a very different feel, right? A very different feel than, than the main one, right? There you go. I don't know if anybody's ever seen the symbol. There's a symbol for Corsica of a of a man with a a band wrapped around like that. They show it on a lot of. A lot of products of France, it's kind of the symbol of Corsica, a man's head with a band wrapped around. Uh, okay, so continuing on. I have a question about Monaco uh, to Ludovic. Uh, yeah. Is Monaco totally independent from the rest of France or is it... Uh... Uh, no, not totally. It's, it's open for our own. In France, we consider Monaco like a French city, in fact. Is, is Monaco uh, present to the outside world? Is pro, uh, Monaco presented by France politically? Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of difficult, yes. It's, uh, it's not totally independent, Monaco. It's a, it's a French city, in fact. It's, uh -huh. um, okay, uh, it's, uh, I know when you go there, you don't have any borders. To, to well, France, yeah. but but I, I mean politically, us. financially, uh, are they kind of independent from France? They they are kind of independent, but not not at all. But not, uh, not the all independence. I believe they do have a different currency, don't they, or do they use the euro? Uh, they, uh, they can we you we can use the the euro in Monaco. Ah, okay. Mm. Yes, they um they are all them. Okay, so can everybody? Sorry, I'm, I'll bring this up here. So let me just change this. I'm gonna. Does everybody know where Monaco is on the map? Does there, anybody know about Monaco? I think one thing everybody knows about Monaco is the kings. The kings. Is the, kings. the, is the what? The king. The king was um, I, the king and the, and the princes. Uh. Ah, okay. Okay. I was going to say the the Monaco Grand Prix is quite famous, right? I think the most uh, famous Grand Prix in the world for for race cars. Mm -hmm. Monaco Grand Prix. Um, F one F one race. F one race, yeah. So th can everybody see? I think this is Monaco right down here. Is it not, Ludovic? Yeah. Is this it right down at the bottom? 
near Andorra? No, must, no, no. Must be further east. Yeah, it's in the no, east. No, no, in the east. east. Where Nice is. Oh, it's east. Like yeah, it's our Nice. Of course, it's our Nice. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I can see it right up right in the corner there. Right here. Yes. Ah, yes. I always get it mixed up with Andorra. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. What's near Italy. We... Yeah, right near the Italian border. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Close to Italy. Cool. And, and then you have Andorra here as well, which is uh, uh, an independent uh, country as well. You've got lots of small little countries touching mm -hmm. touching France, right? You've also got Luxembourg is quite a tiny country mm -hmm. touching in the north as well. Andorra, you mean? Andorra down here, yeah. Andorra in the south, on the border of Spain. Is it it's independent? It's independent as well, yeah. Independent country. Okay, okay. Mm. Uh, okay, so we have we have lots to get through, but tomorrow we're gonna we or sorry on on Wednesday we're gonna um, finish history. So so we talked about lots of the the famous symbols within Paris, right? When when people think of France, I think the first thing that comes to mind is Paris, right? It's it's a, a very centralized um, economy, and and uh, Paris is is kind of the a main display of France, right? So it's it's one centralized city. Lyon and, and Marseille are much smaller than Paris in terms of uh, cultural significance, right? So when we think of Paris, guys, what are some famous things that we think of? Uh, Eiffel Tower and Louvre Museum, sure. uh, the Champs Elysees. Sure, we have the Eiffel Tower, Champs Elysees with the Arctic. Right. Right. Uh, we talk about Le Louvre. One other, what was the other museum that we didn't talk about, guys? Sorry. Modern art. Does anybody remember? I think I think Peter, you mentioned it before. Uh, Centre Pompidou. Right? Centre Pompidou, right? I don't know if anybody's ever seen Pompidou. It's mm -hmm. it's kind of a cool building. Yeah. On on the outside, right? They, the way they designed it was everything. Um, all the things that were supposed to be built on the inside are built on the outside. All the ventilation and and all the and the escalator. The, the escalator, yeah, everything's built nice. on the <laughs> When you go up, <laughs> yeah, it's quite cool. scary, actually. It is a little bit, yeah. <laughs> you go through a big tube. But it's a good Pompidou view. Pompidou is in Paris. Yeah, it's in Paris. It's in Paris, yeah. Pompidou is okay. in Paris. Okay. Ah, uh, and Notre Dame and the Sacre Coeur. Right, yeah, of course. Notre Dame, Sacre Coeur. Uh, we talked about Moulin Rouge, right? Mm -hmm. Famous for its cabarets, right? Uh, Notre Dame, Notre Dame's church is in Paris, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, Notre right. Dame. Yeah, of course. Yeah, right here. Okay. You see that? Uh, okay, Cathedral of Notre Dame. Yeah. So, and we talked about it. What what style is Notre Dame? What style of architecture is this, guys? Baroque. Gothic. 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 Right, because we we said, and what 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 are some big um, signs of of it being Gothic? The gargoyles. The gargoyles, right? Of course, yeah. The gargoyles. That's a very Gothic uh, symbol, right? Also, the 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 minarets, okay, the points here, like this. Okay, you see how things are pointed up at the top. Um, that's that's a very gothic style as well, right? The pointy, the pointy bits. Like that. Mm -hmm. Very uh, impressive. Biggest, uh, oh, what's that? Like? Churches. It looks like a Catholic church. Yes, it's Catholic. It is Catholic. It is a Catholic church. Mm -hmm. It is. It is Catholic. All right. Yeah, yeah. But in interesting style for sure. Okay, so after we talked about that, we talked a little bit quickly. We, we looked at the French Alps, right? Very impressive. One thing that is impressive is, is the, the glaciers that you have and the contrast between green and white is Beautiful. amazing. Yeah. And if you ever go to the Alps and you go high up, you can hear 
the cowbells. That was the most impressive thing I ever heard in the French Alps is the cowbells because you hear dong, 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 and it echoes through <laughs> the hills. Right? It's very cool. So the cows are, are quite amazing to sound. Okay, so we're going quick, guys, because we, we want to get to the new stuff. So here we go. Uh, Mont Saint-Michel, right, a very famous uh, symbol of France as well, up in Normandy, I think. Mm -hmm. I think, is this in Normandy or, or Britannia? I, I forget. Ludovic, do you know? What? Do you so, know, Saint-Michel, Saint is it in uh, Normandy or in Britannia? Uh, it's in Normandy. Normandy, okay. So, yeah, really cool, really cool. And the smell there uh, is wonderful, too. Right? Yeah, it's very beautiful. Yeah, very beautiful. Very beautiful. So, cool stuff and good seafood. You can get some good seafood at Mont Saint-Michel. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next, we talked a little bit about... Uh, and I always say this wrong. Ludovic, how do you pronounce this in, in French? Uh, can. 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 In, in English, everybody always can just says hands. Yeah, but can film festival. Yeah. Can film, film festival. festival. Uh -huh. The yeah. film festival, right? We talked about that. We talked also yeah. about how it, it's kind of a, a richer area. I mean, it has lots of luxury shops, restaurants, hotels. It's not cheap. Yeah. Not it's, cheap. One of the, it's one of the best cities for party. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Big party city, for sure. Cool, and then we wanted to get to French cuisine, okay? So this is where we, we left off last time. So um, I think we read this last time, but let's read it one more time. Victor, can you read French cuisine for us? Victor, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay. French cuisine. France is a nation of food lovers, and the food culture contains some interesting facts. Food is to be enjoyed and savored. For example, lunch time in France is usually two hours long just for this season. Except for large cities, almost everything closes from noon until 2 p.m. when French restaurants are open for lunch. Good, good. So, and this is one thing that we talked about. I think Peter was mentioning it too before. Is so it, all the businesses close from from noon until two, but if you want to eat in France, it can be very difficult because restaurants are open from specific time. Right? If you want to go have a meal between three o'clock and seven o'clock, it's not easy because most restaurants kind of close um, after lunch. And reopen for for dinner, which is which is mm. quite late. Yeah. But it's usually very worth the wait. Okay. Usually worth the wait because the food is quite delicious. So one thing that people take a lot of pride in in France is yeah. the cheese. Cheese. Okay. The mm. French cheese is, is pretty amazing, and it's it's a lot different than than other places that are famous for cheese. So. For example, I think, um, let's say Holland. Holland is quite famous. Uh -huh. Does anybody yeah. know, what is the difference in the cheeses of Holland and the cheeses of France? Ludovic. <laughs> <laughs> does, does anyone know? Holland is like a yellow, yellow cheese. Uh, so, uh. Sort of. And one, one of the big things is actually how they are um, cured, how the cheese is cured, okay? In, oh, in the cured. Yeah, when you cure cheese. So in Holland, they put it in kind of a, a plastic wrapping that goes around your cheeses. So your cheese is very secure inside, okay? There's a plastic mm -hmm. wrapping that you have to take off, okay? Or a, a wax, a wax wrapping, right? Wax? They have mm. wax that goes all around the cheese. Uh -huh. okay? Cleans it inside and cures the cheese. In France, they don't do that. What do they do in France? Does anybody know? They use mold. They use Lots mold. of mold. Mold. Yeah. Everywhere, mold, in all colors. Looks horrible, exactly. but tastes very nice. Yeah. 
So big thing about French cheeses is the mold. So they're cured and, and it has the same kind of idea as the wax, but the mold just grows and grows and grows. So what the cheese curers have to do is they have to come by every day and kind of wipe off the mold and then put it back on the shelf okay, as they're curing the cheese. So uh, pretty interesting. But I think it also improves uh, the flavor too. It's not just to, 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 to keep, it, keep it from spoiling. Yeah, you're right, you're right, yeah, for sure. The, and there's many different ways to, to uh, cure cheese too, right? So uh, all the cheeses have very distinct flavors, different, um, different textures as well, okay? And a lot of uh, French dishes uh, are actually very rich in cheese. So you'll have some dishes and I, after eating them, I always wonder how, how people in France aren't fatter. Because if you walk around France, people aren't very fat. People aren't very fat. But there is so much cheese in the food, and the food is so rich. I think if I lived in France for very long, I would be so fat. Because I could just eat it. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, when do they eat uh, cheese? In the breakfast or dinner, lunch? Is there a special... All of, all of it, no, all of it, Tassitin, and, and also for dessert often as well, too. Sometimes you have the option, do you want dessert or would you like some cheese? Yeah, uh, but we don't eat cheese for the breakfast. Not for breakfast? Not, no, no, it's only in Great Britain they do, but not in France. Okay, okay. <laughs> like the snacks, I think. In the breakfast for Turkey. Okay. Ah, right, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah, turkey turkey cheese is a big part of the breakfast, right? Mm. Yes. Yeah. With bread. Yeah. No, it, we, we talked about this before, and the, the only disappointing thing I find about French food is the breakfast. Because mm -hmm. tartan, it's such a mm. small thing, right? They, basically what you do is you take your baguette, you cut it up, and you put some, some jam on top, right? Um, croissant, cafe. or a croissant, yeah, sometimes croissant or yeah. pain chocolat. Yeah. Om omelette. Yeah. That's the reason why they call it petit. <laughs> but yeah, le petit déjeuner, right? It's quite small. <laughs> That's why it's petit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but by the time, yeah, by the time lunch comes, you're very hungry. I am always. I am. <laughs> but the lunches are huge in France. Too. Mm. Um, okay, so speaking about cheese, let's just do a little bit of reading here. Uh, Tessitin, can you read for us about French cheese? Can you read that? Is that big enough? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, I can read. Okay. The French consume enough cheese to provide 25 kilogram of cheese per person, making them the largest cheese consumers in the world. In addition, the French produce over 300 different kinds of cheese. In addition to its use in cooking, cheese is often served as a course in itself. In this case, it is served after the main meal but before dessert. This typically consists of a platter with three or four different cheeses from which guests can slice pieces according to their preferences. Slices of a baguette are typically provided at the same time. Good. And, and that's quite important is that uh, often, usually, cheese is eaten with bread and usually a baguette. Right? Slices mm -hmm. of baguette. Other French breads as well, but uh, cheese is usually served with, with bread. Um, this is interesting though. So the French consume enough cheese to provide 25 kilograms of cheese per person. I think this is per year. That's, that's a lot. <laughs> so eat a lot of cheese, right? There is a lot of cheese being consumed in France. No question. But delicious cheese. It's hard not to eat it. And some, sometimes you find yourself eating cheese even when you don't want cheese because you Think, oh, it looks so delicious. You just keep eating. You keep eating. Coming <laughs> for brie. Delicious. Yeah, yeah. And there are some some dishes. I don't know. Has anybody ever heard of um, 
Tati Flat? Yeah, of course. Flat, I think. Is it spelled like this? Is this correct? Ludovic? Well, yeah, it's good. Tati Flat. Yeah, Tati Flat. Yeah, and this is potatoes and uh, I think Lardon and, and Roblochon, right? Yeah. That's it. And, and it is so, it, it's, pota it's the heaviest meal you've ever had, but it's so delicious that you just keep eating it. Right, yeah. you're eating it, and by the end, your your stomach feels so big, but it's it's still delicious. So you keep eating and eating. It's difficult to get away from. <laughs> and I think it's it's probably the worst food you could eat if you're on a diet, but it's so delicious. <laughs> your your mouth is asking you more, but your yeah. stomach not. You know, right now, just talking about it, my mouth's watering a little bit. So. <laughs> sure? Yes. Have you ever uh, ate uh, what you call raclette? Raclette? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's that's the most cheap. That's the most. Cheap. This is all you do is you're basically just you have a little grill in front of you, right? Yeah. And you just sit there and you cook cheese. Ah, and you, you're just eating cheese and cheese, and, and they give you potatoes and meat on the side, and you're just covering potatoes and meat with. Melted cheese, and they give you so but I much. Think they mix uh, three or four kind of uh, cheese. Ah, oh, yeah, I think so. I think so. I'm not sure. What do you know? What the? Uh, it's big from the mountains, right, Ludovic? Yeah, it's from from the mountain. From the Alps. Uh, yeah. We, we take chocolate when we go skiing. Ah, yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Good for energy. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's it's very filling, very filling, very good. But I, I I was so surprised when they first gave it to me because they give you so much cheese. I thought, yeah. wow, how am I ever going to eat this much cheese? You get more kilos when you <laughs> yeah, definitely, lots of kilos. All right, can anybody tell me what is this dish here? Mm, looks delicious. Uh, uh, fish? Like, uh, no, not fish. Yeah. It's pork. Pork. Not not pork. Lettuce, lettuce, green lettuce. <laughs> That's lettuce, yes. Uh, lettuce, yes. And a pear, I guess, I guess. And red wine, but I don't know what that uh, means. What is it? But actually, this right here is actually foie gras. Foie gras. Mm -hmm. Foie gras. Does okay. anybody know what is foie gras? No. Uh, from... It's a combination with tomato sauce and... Ah, <laughs> uh, is it from from uh, from um, from a bird? Um, uh, what's in, yeah. uh, in inside or? <laughs> it is bacon. No, you yeah. guys are right. It's actually the liver. The liver. Okay. How do you write it, uh, Daniel? How, okay, sorry. It's fatty goose liver and Go foie gras. Fatty yeah. goose liver. Spelled oh, like okay, liver. This. Okay. Foie gras. Foie gras. Foie gras. Foie gras. Foie gras. No. Yeah. So this is this is uh, one of the most famous French dishes, and it's like a pate, right? Okay? Mm. It, it's yeah, it's a no, little bit. It, it's pate. quite expensive, actually. If you eat this outside of France, in France it's not too expensive, but outside of France it's very expensive. Okay, mm -hmm. foie gras, and there are a lot of. Uh, it's it's a very famous French dish. But there are a lot of animal rights activists who are against it because they kind of they force feed the geese, right? Mm -hmm. Give them lots of food so that they have big fatty livers. the The problem is it's very delicious. So yeah. it's, <laughs> it's difficult to stop when you have such delicious food. Right. So, uh, fogoa, a very it's, famous. Uh, uh, also contains uh, includes. Uh, cholesterol, high cholesterol. Yeah, I believe Is that. Correct? Yeah, I, I think so. I believe that for sure. Yeah. The bate or the or the image is right. The right. The, it's it's actually the image is right, but it is actually a pate. So what they do is they cook it up, they cook it up, and then it's sliced. It it's made into slices. But if you take your knife and you cut into this part right here. Okay, if you cut off a piece of this, you can spread it on your bread. It's still spread. Wow. Okay. okay. It's delicious. Very delicious, yeah. We are hungry right. now. 
yeah. I know, I know. All right, guys, what do we have here? Oyster. Escargot, right? Not oysters. What? What? Oh. What is escargot? Snails. Snails. Exactly. Snails. Snails. Right? A snails. special snails. I think uh, they are called wine Weinberg uh, snails or so. They are a specific kind. Pretty big. Yeah. But, you know, does anybody know how they prepare this? No. Uh, they go in the mm -hmm. oven. Uh, uh, they uh, uh, the shells or the houses of the snails are uh, locked with uh, lots of uh, garlic butter. Right, garlic butter. And they butter put and them parsley. in the oven. How do but you eat it? You, with you uh, actually, those special forks. Yeah, you, do you see this little fork up here, Lorenzo? See this tiny little fork here? No, okay. going with okay. two with two knives. With two, well, yeah, with two prongs on it. We call two those prongs. 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 Mm -hmm. And you have this thing right here, which holds. So you use this thing to hold the shell in okay. one hand, and then you okay. pull it out with the little fork here. Okay, okay. But it's actually a long process because before before they uh, cook this, you have to actually pull the snails out of the shells, clean all of the shells. And then put the snails back in with the butter and the garlic and the parsley. Boil it? No, they, they bake it. They bake ah, okay, it. Bake it. It takes a, a, lo a long time to prepare it. Oh, it's a very long time. Long process. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But delicious. It's worth it. it. It tastes a lot like seafood, right? Mm -hmm. so you've, got, you've got the garlic butter and things. So, uh, yeah, really delicious. Ludovic, are, are you a fan of escargot? No, I ate them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I, I was too, too young when I tried to eat them, so <laughs> yeah. it's not this good thing for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say you're being very quiet about escargot, so I, I knew you didn't like them, I could tell. <laughs> they can be very tough, almost like chewing gum, if they don't prepare them right. Right, yeah, you, you need them to be, be prepared well. All right. Now we have another one which I've oh. I've tried <laughs> once, but uh, very good. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> but, but the poor animal. What is this little picture here? <laughs> Frog what legs. They can see green tongue lines. Frog legs. I'm Tastes nice. like chicken. Frog legs. Oh. I have like chicken. <laughs> You're right, Farida. It does. It tastes a little bit like chicken, but also like the escargot. If it's prepared very well, it's delicious. Right? It can be very delicious. So there you go. And there's a lot. There's a lot more meat than you would expect on a frog's legs. I think they're specific frogs. Very big Is it frogs. Boiled. I think it there's boiled? different ways to prepare it, Tessatina. I don't know. These ones do look boiled. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Ludovic, do you know about frog legs, how it's prepared usually? No, I don't know more about it, uh, how okay. it's prepared. Yeah. But it's I, delicious. I'm not... <laughs> What's that? It's delicious. It's delicious, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I, no, 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 no. I think in this animal, I, I, I wasn't able to eat it. No. <laughs> you can't do it? <laughs> no, 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 no. I hate, I hate frogs. <laughs> That's not our culture. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> as long as you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like eating a, a snake. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. Maybe maybe if you don't tell her it's frog's legs, if you cut up the meat first and give it to Lily. Maybe. <laughs> oh, delicious. <I don't> <laughs> I can eat the green and lime, but not the frog legs. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to eat it with skin or just meat? Or? The, How do you usually, eat this, it? When, when I've eaten it, the skin has been on it. Skin was on yeah. it. Mm. Yeah. Not to peel it, but quite, yeah. quite delicious, quite delicious. Oh. Oh, this is clip, clips. All right, and oh. yeah, this one I think is famous around the world, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh -huh. the, the crepe, the crepe, right? And and there's in France you have different kinds of crepes, right? You have mm -hmm. your your salty, uh, salty or sweet, right? Savory or sweet, they say. So mm. um, very good, very it's good nice. crepes. Does anybody know what they use um, for the, the the flour of a crepe? Flour? Uh, 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 green, 
uh, yellow flower, you mean? Yeah, it's, I think they usually use uh, a buckwheat, but maybe this is just in different regions. I know down, uh, where was I? I can't remember. Somewhere in France, they use buckwheat. I don't know if anybody knows what that is. Buckwheat, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Specific, it's slightly right? nutty flavor. Right, yeah. Yeah, like a dark a darker uh, flower. But you also can, uh, uh, sorry, you can eat no, go ahead. crepes. You can eat uh, crepes in, on the streets because there are some places on the street that they uh, make uh, crepes. Definitely. And, uh -huh, yeah. and, and you can eat uh, on the street uh, and they are cheaper. <laughs> because yeah. We always uh, did. You always ate them on the streets. <laughs> yeah, crepes. Crepes are one of these foods that you can get in restaurants and on on the street, right? Mm -hmm. For sure. Very delicious. Uh, but it, but it have uh, it have meat or cheese inside, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, some have meat and cheese, and some have fruits and chocolates and nuts. Mm. It depends, right? When it's yeah. sweeted. The, uh, yeah. the the buckwheat one is for. The the meal or or what is a uh, salt? It's for salt, and the the sugar ah. one is for the dessert. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's it. Exactly. Exactly. So so this one right here, you can see the flour is not buckwheat, right? Yeah. yeah. It's for dessert. Yeah, dessert one. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, cool. Uh, Peter, can you read some other famous French foods for us? I can't speak French. <laughs> okay, like, should we get should Confit we get confit de canard ratatouille your <laughs> bras <laughs> with caco cock au vin uh, le dog le dog le can help us something I heard you say coco vin very very good well, yeah, coco vin well, is is chicken in in uh, white wine Right. Yeah. Uh, ratatouille is a kind of well, it's more or less vegetables, no? It's it's uh, I, aubergines and 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 yeah. uh, not cucumbers. Uh, the other zucchini. Uh, uh, zucchinis, yeah. Yeah. And they are uh, uh, sliced and 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 made up in, in, in into rounds usually. Actually, yeah. there, there there was an animated film uh, uh, called Rat Ratatouille with a red. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ah, yes. Ratatouille. Mm -hmm. I, I think the, the the joke about ratatouille is you kind of what's in ratatouille? It's whatever is left in your fridge, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you put in ratatouille. Whatever you find left in the fridge. So, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's yeah. really good, though. really good. Lots of vegetables and, and good flavors. Right? Beef bourguignon. Uh, all I know is uh, well, it's made from beef, but I don't know what the bourguignon part is. It's it's the sauce, and it's actually kind of like a a, a stewed a stewed beef. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's slow cooked, very slow cooked in, in beef mm. juice. Very good. Right. Does anybody know uh, confit de canard? Mm, it's a bird, yes. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What, what do we mean? What is canard? Does anybody know? Is it a canary? Confit de canard. Canard. Yeah. Does anyone know? This is actually just duck. 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 Uh, well cooked duck. It's very nice. Very nice. Okay. So most of most of uh, French dishes, most of the main dishes are actually slow. They're, they're slow to cook, right? So they prepare them ahead of time. If you ever go to a French restaurant, most foods have been prepared ahead of time and kind of heated up because they're uh, they take a long time to cook. Right? Mm -hmm. And the first one is uh, the well-known French onion soup. Mm. Uh, French onion soup, there you go. With yeah. lots of cheese also, melted <laughs> cheese on top. Mm. Yeah, very delicious. And that last one, does anybody know uh, what the last one is there? Is it the grand wing? No. What's that? Is it that that's, mm. that's how you say frog legs, guys. That's frog legs. Uh, <laughs> there you go. It sounds very fan very fancy, right? Very fancy in French. There's a, there's a tricky name. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So lots of famous French foods there. All right, uh, let's move on because uh, what wine. Is wine. French foods? Uh, champagne. There's your wine and your champagne. 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 
Cabernet Sauvignon. Yeah, you've got a lot Chardonnay. of uh, famous, oh. famous wines and lots of famous um, wines from around different parts of France. Okay, most of France you can grow wine in. That's the incredible mm -hmm. part, right? They have a perfect, uh, a perfect growing growing seasons for for wine for the grapes. So each part of France has its own thing. Can anybody name some famous regions for growing yeah. wine in France? Alsace, Bordeaux, Bordeaux, Provence, yeah, yeah, Provence and Champagne. Right, yeah, Champagne, right, mm -hmm. sure, yeah, lo lots of ah Burgundy, Burgundy, Burgundy as well, right, yeah, yeah. Anything else? Can anybody think of any other ones? Ludovic, can you? What's your favorite kind of French wine? What region do you like? Uh, I don't have a, pre um, a prefer, but uh, maybe it's one who are uh, with a kind of cigar, a little cigar. Ah, the the cognac. No, no, no just um, what do we say? Um, there is a touch of cigar in the wine, so it tastes better for me. I think. Oh, hey, interesting, interesting. Yeah, I cool. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, yeah, lo lots, lots of famous wines. Okay, uh, Ludovic, could you read for us about French wines? Yeah, French wines is produced all through good France in quantities between fifty and sixty million hectolitres per year, or seven, eight billion bottles. France is the world's second largest wine producer behind Italy. French wine traces its history to the sixth century. BC with many of French regions dating their wine making history to Roman times. The wine pr the wines produced went from expensive high end wines sold internationally to more modest wines usually only seen within France. All right, cool. So there you go guys, that's amazing, hey? 7 to 8 billion bottles mm. of wine a year. So it, it's not a small industry, right? That's a lot of wine. That's a lot of wine. It's more uh, than uh, world population. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. More than the world population. So if every person drank a bottle of wine in, in one year. year right? That's why mm -hmm. they have a, a good health. Wine good, yeah, they do say it's good for your heart, right? <laughs> for your heart, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, and um, reading about champagne as well, Lorenzo. Okay, Champagne is a sparkling, a sparkling wine produced from grapes grown in the Champagne region of France, following rules that demand secondary fermentation of the wine in the, bo in the bottle to create carbonation. Some use the term champ 